I think this is quite a groundbreaking report and the particular chapter that I, that I wrote with a colleague on the links between migration and violent extremism and integration I think was, was quite brave actually of IOM to publish it because this is a discussion that many people find difficult. I think many migration advocates are very uncomfortable with even discussing the link between migration and violent extremism. I understand their, their nervousness. As we've discussed there are political agendas and certain media agendas that I think are making mistakes around this issue. And so our intention in that piece, uh, piece of work for the World Migration Report was really just to try to lay out the facts as we understood them and to perhaps inform a slightly more objective debate. I think since then the debate has become more objective. I think more people are engaging in this uh, debate, recognising it as politically sensitive. There is a growing body of evidence that is beginning to emerge. It's still a, a, a young research field, but I think I would credit IOM with, through that publication, at least beginning to launch a sensible objective debate on this, on this issue. Preventing violent extremism is a, a very new field, yeah. uh, and, and to an extent it's still largely not very well understood. I think we need much more evidence and much more data. It's not clear, for example, what drives certain people to become radicalised to violent extremism. Uh, is uh, the man who allegedly is responsible for Christchurch being driven by the same motivations as someone who, for ISIL or Boko Haram and, and so on? It's very difficult to understand what the motivations are. It's also currently quite difficult to understand how to prevent uh, those, those issues. We are a new fund here at GSERF, the Global Community Engagement and Resilience Fund, uh, we are giving grants out to local communities to try to help them build their resilience against violent extremism and we're beginning to learn what matters and what doesn't matter. The thing that we found is most important is basically about giving people alternatives. I mean the, the main I think message to communicate to governments is that if you want to deal with radicalization and violent extremism and terrorism you need a comprehensive approach. Now I think traditionally we've adopted kinetic measures, we've adopted security measures, we've adopted border fences and all, all of that sort of thing. I think some more work at the other end of the spectrum, working on prevention, working on communities, working on giving young people an alternative to their futures is something we also need to do. The challenge of prevention is of course it's long term and it's very hard to generate results quickly. So I think governments need to have the patience and the belief in prevention and really focus on that. I mean, there is growing evidence, you asked about the evidence base, there is growing evidence that social media is very important in radicalising people around the world. I've just come back from Bangladesh and it's very important. Yeah. Facebook is being used by people to radicalise young people, especially university students in Dhaka. The flip side is that we think social media is incredibly powerful as a way of preventing violent extremism. And I think currently, as you know, Facebook and other sorts of organisations are working not just to take down harmful material, but also to try to promote more positive material. So I think there's great potential there, but we're, we're just beginning to think about that, I think. I think social media is a, a democratic process which sometimes exhibits aspects that you and I may not agree with, but I think it's still important that we have some element of freedom of speech. I'm more interested in making sure that people who use social media can make a sensible judgment on what they're reading. I think critical thinking, for example, is immensely important. And I think young people who can think critically and can read things on social media and realise that actually that's not what it says in the Quran, or that's not what my parents taught me, or that doesn't seem to be sensible. That's, I think, what you need to do rather than try to control the social media. Uh, and I recognise that this is a politically very sensitive discussion. There are lots of people out there who think we shouldn't even be having this discussion. As I said, the evidence is clear that on the whole migrants are not violent extremists or criminals or terrorists or any of, any of that stuff, so why are we even discussing it? My answer would be that whether we like it or not, this discussion is taking place in certain countries, amongst certain populations, we know that's the case. And it seems to me that that is the reason to engage. And it seems to me that people like us and institutions like the IOM that can provide evidence, that can have an objective, informed discussion and debate should be doing this because if we don't do it then people who are perhaps less informed who are peddling misinformation perhaps who have a different agenda will be doing it so i i recognize the political sensitivity i think we have to be very careful in this discussion but i think it's a discussion we have to engage in